The Fortress of Louisbourg was established in 1713 in the French colony of Ile Royale, which later became known as Cape Breton Island. This colony was located on unceded Mi'kmaq territory in the district of Unamagi. The fortress was a significant port for French naval forces until British troops besieged the site twice, leading to its eventual abandonment and destruction in the 1760s. In its lifetime, the fortress served as a hub of maritime activity. It was a center for trade, cod fishing, and naval operations, and was home to many French subjects. At its height, between three and 4,000 people resided in Louisbourg, making it a sizable French outpost. Louisbourg's proximity to the Grand Banks cod fishery and its position at the entrance of the Gulf of St. Lawrence made it appealing to the French after they lost their territories in Newfoundland and Acadia, now Nova Scotia, to the British under the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713. From this location, at the southeastern side of Ile Royale, the French Navy could easily defend against British ships en route to the St. Lawrence River, the access point into New France's major settlements at Quebec and Montreal. This is why the fortress was a focus of British assaults on New France in wartime, with Louisbourg falling into British hands during Imperial Wars in 1745 and 1758. To commemorate Louisbourg's importance in the history of New France, the site was designated a National Historic Site in 1920. The reconstructed town site visitors wander around today was built over five decades, beginning in 1961, representing about a quarter of the town's historical size. Today, the fortress of Louisbourg is under siege by a different sort of threat, albeit a slow-moving one that has always lingered in the background of its history the environment. In this age of climate change, rising sea levels and coastal erosion threaten to overtake areas of the National Historic Site. While Parks Canada has undertaken several projects to prevent rising sea levels from washing away portions of the site, including by constructing protective structures at Barrier Beach and by raising the key walls at the reconstructed site, other parts of the historic settlement remain at risk. Top of this list is Rochefort Point, where the largest and longest used cemetery at Lewisburg is located. It is believed that up to a thousand individuals were buried at Rochefort Point. Coastal erosion carries away more and more of this little peninsula annually, a process sped up by tropical storms like Hurricane Fiona, which raged through the area in September of 2022. Dr. Mallory Moran, the archeologist for Cape Breton's National Parks, reported that in Fiona's wake, some areas along the point lost several meters from the coastline. In order to rescue these individuals who were buried at Rochford Point, Parks Canada partnered with bioarchaeologists from the University of New Brunswick beginning in 2016. It's their aim, as Moran said, to save these individuals before they erode out. Despite pandemic disruptions, the team led by Dr. Amy Scott has been busily excavating remains from Rochefort Point every summer since 2017, and to date they've recovered over 170 individuals. This bioarchaeological field program is the only one of its kind in Canada, with the mission to rescue and reinter these 18th century remains. Field school participants receive a hands-on course on excavation methods and techniques field data collection, and ethical handling practices. This collaboration between Dr. Scott and Parks Canada offers a unique opportunity for students and visitors alike. Through this partnership, graduate student staff and researchers at the university receive unique access to these 18th century remains, and the fortress receives hitherto unknown details about the everyday lives of Louisbourg's 18th century residents. By studying the remains, grave goods, and burial practices at Lewisburg, Dr. Scott and her team have learned a lot about the lived experiences of the individuals they've recovered, including the most common kinds of injuries endured at Lewisburg, the diseases they harbored, and their lifestyles. So in today's episode of Historia Nostra, we're visiting the bioarchaeologists at the Fortress of Lewisburg in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia and thinking about how this ongoing rescue archaeology project contributes to our understanding of 18th century life at Lewisburg. In 
In July of 2022, I went out to Cape Breton to meet the bioarchaeologists and graduate students in charge of the Rochford Point excavations. We arrived at Lewisburg with Dr. Scott and her team just as the museum was waking up for the day on a uncharacteristically sunny Thursday morning. I'll let the team introduce themselves. So my name is Nicole Breeden and I'm a recent graduate from the University of New Brunswick. Um, I currently have a master's degree in biological anthropology and we are here to do the excavation at the Rochford Point Cemetery. My name is Marissa and I just recently graduated with a master's uh, under the supervision of Dr. Amy Scott. My name is Chris Burgess, and I'm at the University of New Brunswick, working as a field tech with Dr. Scott this year. My name is Natasha Breen, and I am currently a graduate student uh, in interdisciplinary studies at the University of New Brunswick. I'm Dr. Mallory Moran, and I'm the Parks Canada archaeologist for the Cape Breton Field Unit. Uh, my name is Dr. Amy Scott. I'm an associate professor at the University of New Brunswick. I'm also the project director of the UNB Bioarchaeology Field School. And right now we're standing on Rochford Point at the Fortress of Lewisburg National Historic Site of Canada. During our visit, Dr. Scott and Dr. Mallory Moran were overseeing the topsoil being removed from the Rochford Point grave sites they would be excavating in the following weeks. Meanwhile, Chris, Nicole, Natasha, and Marissa were working on the other side of the old fortification walls, digging test pits to attempt to locate another at-risk gravesite recorded on historical maps, one associated with the hospital at Lewisburg. Before we dug into the site's active archaeology, I asked Dr. Scott and Dr. Moran to fill me in on how Lewisburg was reconstructed and to talk a little about the benefits and limitations of the interpretation offered at this site. Um, so the reconstruction of the Fortress of Lewisburg was really an incredible project mm -hmm. for the time. I mean, um, the amount of research and resources that went into reconstructing Lewisburg was incredible. Um, but it is not the kind of project that we would ever do today. So the reconstruction is actually built on top of the original archaeological foundations. Right. So everything is in the exact spot that it would have been. Everything's the exact size that it would have been at the time, mm -hmm. um, which is really quite a remarkable uh, thing because, you know, when you think about the size of the homes, the construction, they were able to reconstruct that very accurately based on that um, because there were huge teams of archaeologists working out here when they started that reconstruction period. So, um, what, what happened at the time was they came in and did complete archaeological excavations of the reconstructed town site and then used as much of the original stone and brick and material from those excavations to rebuild the buildings as they once were. Mm -hmm. One of the benefits is that the visitor who comes to Lewisburg really gets a sense of what the town site or at least a part of the town site was like. Um, and I think that's a really valuable educational opportunity. Not only that, but the buildings themselves are constructed in such a way that they are now historic properties. So they have architectural value in and of themselves. Um, but some of the drawbacks are now those areas where the buildings have been built are lost to us. Mm -hmm. So we can't come back with the knowledge and, and the technology that we have today and revisit those archeological sites to ask mm -hmm. different questions. Another drawback is that the portion of the town that was reconstructed is like the best, <laughs> the fanciest of the buildings, the upper crust of Lewisburg, so the social upper classes. And so part of the story of Lewisburg that involves um, regular people <laughs> is lost to the visitor and we have to interpret that in other ways. Yeah. So what you can see here, this is about 20 to 25% of what would have been all of Lewisburg. So it's actually, you know, it's pretty impressive for what it is. And you're sort of looking at the more kind of elite side of town, the more right. uppity up side of town, um, not sort of the, the lower the lower end of town, uh, which would have been um, sort of, if you look into the harbor there, like across the harbor, mm -hmm. um, we went past sort of that, um, walking trail on the other side as we were coming into the fortress and that's considered sort of the north town trail over there or the old town trail mm -hmm. and and that's where sort of would have been the everyday folks right yeah um, they certainly would have been here in the fortress as well but most of what's reconstructed is sort of the more elite homes and the nicer homes in the area so, so 
we're not building any more reconstructed buildings mm -hmm. because we're right in the middle of an archaeological site. So, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it does limit the expansion or the diversification of the reconstruction, but you know, we're lucky to have what we have. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we can always come in and do another excavation adjacent to these buildings and use that as an interpretive tool to teach the public about what other activities have been going on at Lewisburg. Mm -hmm. While the elite spaces inside the fortress are largely inaccessible to today's archaeologists, there's still a lot to learn from the spaces outside the reconstructed site, particularly about the lower class people who lived here. The BioArc project at Rochford Point is one of the ways Parks Canada is learning more about everyday life in Lewisburg and helps fill in gaps left by the reconstructed site. Rochford Point was the primary burying ground for Lewisburg's deceased after 1738. It contains the graves from a widespread of Lewisburg residents and visitors, including French and English individuals. The Rescue Bioarchaeology Project at Rochford Point aims to protect and recover these individuals buried there from coastal erosion. We are experiencing this problem along many areas of the coastline in which we're losing a lot of land. Mm. Um, and this has been a particularly bad problem out on Rochford Point because we have this very large burial ground that is at risk of being washed away. And so our response to that um, in partnering with UNB to have this field school, uh, I think has been excellent because it means we can do several things at once. So we can excavate the remains and make sure they're protected. And at the same time, learn more about the people of Lewisburg, learn about the historic properties that are on Rashford Point, um, train the next generation of archeologists and bioarchaeologists and people who go into forensics and police work. Um, and educate the public. Oh, and this so. one sort of shows, you know, sort of that sea level and sort of what the changing landscape looks like. So the yellow's kind of representing what the original landscape was, whereas the green obviously is, is what we see today. Now, and again, this has changed since they put the panel up, of course, but you can see how much of it's really, really been lost. And, you know, on this map here, there's sort of this old kind of vestige here of where the cemetery was. So originally the cemetery was right kind of in the middle of the point. So there was no danger of losing it. But now, you know, as the landscapes continue to shrink and we lose more and more of that, that landmass, you know, that cemetery now is right sort of knocking on the door of the coast there, which makes it quite difficult um, because we've lost so much of it so quickly. I think mm -hmm. that this research in particular is really important because not only are we learning so much about the civilization that was there and the people who were there, um, but there's also the recovery aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of bioarchaeological sites have this, um, I guess, component of also preserving what's lost in terms of the coastal erosion. I think that's really important. Yeah. So essentially when we talk about rescue archaeology, we're talking about a site, whether it's um, a site that's a material site with material, um, sort of material culture objects, or sort of a cemetery site that's at risk of being lost. So um, it just changes the speed in which we try and address some of these issues. Because we're losing so much of um, the coastline to sort of climate change, coastal erosion, um, the archaeology that we're doing here very much has sort of that rescue mind. Set. And so essentially what we're trying to do is um, rescue the remains and excavate the remains um, in sort of an expedited fashion, but still collecting as much data as we can. So in terms of the techniques we use or sort of the amount of effort that we put in, that remains um, the same, so but we're just trying to do it quickly. So one of the things that's a little bit different with rescue um, archaeology is that in this context, we use a mechanical excavator to take the topsoil off. Traditionally, with an archaeological excavation, we would do that by hand. But based on how big the cemetery is and how much we're trying to excavate each season, it's a benefit to us to have an excavator remove that topsoil so that we can speed up that process. The Rescue BioArc project is important for several reasons, not only for preserving and protecting the remains of these persons, but also because studying these burials helps modern researchers understand how these people lived. 
much of it, I think more than anything, it's, you know, the, the value of this kind of work is looking at those everyday people. And we sort of talked about that yesterday, and yeah. that's really an important part of our research and, and why I think this work is so important to sort of marry with the historic record. When we think about that, it's, you know, it would be nice. We think about the diversity we see in modern day, you know, in different cultures around the world. And then sometimes I think in the past, we tend to have this very narrow viewpoint of what people lives were like you know we don't sort of paint them with the same richness that we see today and and that's what we're really trying to do is show that it's much more than just sort of these white colonial settlers it's it's a much bigger picture than that so that's an important part of what we do absolutely i i can't state enough the value that amy's project brings to parks canada and um you know having such a skilled bioarchaeologist come to work on the site uh, brings an incredible value to Parks Canada and um, you know even though our project is a rescue archaeology project mm -hmm. we're structuring it so that it's research driven as much as possible and so the opportunities to learn about the people who were buried there are very valuable and it's Amy's project that enables us to have that information about the past so right. we're very lucky. <laughs> The Rescue Bioarchaeology Project at Lewisburg is an important initiative to protect individuals buried at Rochford Point from being washed out to sea, and offers both researchers from the University of New Brunswick and Parks Canada unique opportunities. But this also creates a unique experience for visitors. So one of the things that we're seeing at Rochford Point uh, is that we have the chance to interact with visiting members of the public and we get to talk to them about what we're doing and what we're learning kind of in real time. Uh, mm. And they get to learn a lot about what archeologists do and the kinds of questions we ask about the past and how we use the data that we find to tell us about the past. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity for members of the public to learn um, and get to see the value of what we're doing as it's happening, which, you know, oftentimes when we have archeological work the archaeologists will go out and do it and then they're kind of isolated they'll mm -hmm. write their paper they'll write up the results and then you know it might get published in a journal it might get presented to the public but oftentimes it's not so mm -hmm. i think this is a great opportunity for people to to see what we're doing um, and to learn more about you know the past at lewisburg and it's not every day you get to see an excavation, archaeological excavation that involves human remains or you know bioarchaeological material. And it, it's not a hassle. It's not a burden. It's something that's actually enjoyable to get up for a minute and just explain to somebody what's going on and how we're working and show them a little bit of the world that we're into every day. Yeah, it's like a window into the past. Yeah, these people existed, and these are the people that walked around the fort you just walked around. So. So yeah. I think that's super, super interesting to tie the two. It, it is a real place. It's real people who actually lived here, and these are the real people that were here. So. Mm -hmm. um, and it also gets to show a lot of people um, this whole academic discipline that they don't normally get to interact with or really see firsthand or experience. So I think there's a lot of um, personal excitement gained from talking to the visitors and mm -hmm. getting to show them what we do and show them things that they likely haven't seen before and likely won't have the opportunities to ever see. So it's really, really fun to interact with them. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a wonderful experience and I hope we can reach as many people as possible. The field school is also a valuable experience for bioarchaeologists in training. I'll let Dr. Scott's graduate student staff explain why they came and for many returned to Lewisburg. So it's my third year working on the Rochford Point site and um, I just think it's a really important project. It's something obviously Dr. Scott's passionate about and something that's really interesting um, historically and it's, I think it's important we're dealing with you know, human remains so it's something that um, takes precedence over some of the other sites around. Um, uh, it's a beautiful site and it's very um, much community involvement and you know, the people of the fortress are very respectful of everything and they want the site to be properly excavated and properly recorded and it seems to be something that this team seems to do well as, as far as we're told so yeah, I just want to keep coming back and as long as I can at least if I get 
the bottom of it all. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I was really interested in, in getting experience doing bioarchaeology. Mm. Um, and this is one of the, I think possibly the only place in Canada, the only field school in Canada that does that. So that was my initial interest in coming here. Um, I had been really excited to go out to the field because I've spent some time in the lab at UNB, the um, Bioarchaeology Research and Teaching Lab. So obviously all the remains are housed in that lab and um, a lot of the artifacts as well. And so it's been really interesting to see what they have excavated, what they have recovered. And I wanted to be part of the, sort of the um, broader process of that. So I've been really excited to get out to site. And then the third thing was Cape Breton um, has a very, very like friendly, homey kind of vibe. So I've been really enjoying being here. Yeah, great. It's just a nice place to spend the summer. It, it is. It's chance. a really yeah. nice place to spend the summer. That's right. The Biowork Project at Rochford Point in Lewisburg is the next chapter in the fortress's struggle against climate. In consequence of Parks Canada's efforts to save these burials from rising sea levels and erosion, park staff and researchers from UNB's BioArc Research and Teaching Lab have a unique opportunity to learn about the lives of the fortress's historical inhabitants. For the foreseeable future, or until they are no longer able to safely work at Rochford Point, this project presents an incredible opportunity for visitors to see bioarchaeologists at work. You can see this year's BioArc team in action at the Fortress from mid-July to mid-August. If you're interested in getting involved or in joining next year's team, see the links in the description. Thank you to Dr. Scott, her team, and Dr. Marin for their time and help creating this video. Through pandemic disruptions, life events, and scheduling problems, this video was a years long project. And I'm grateful for Dr. Scott's continued enthusiasm and encouragement despite delays. This video was written and edited by me, Aaron Isaac. Videography is courtesy of Ariel Pyatt, and our theme music is by Brooke for Free. You can learn more at brookforfree.bangham.com. Alright, so we can